Welcome. I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage in Southern California. Today we're holding uh, our monthly tech meet at Ronnie's Garage. So this is kind of an open session. So if anybody has any questions about their car or concerns, we can talk about that. A Silver Cloud has a full frame. It has a full chassis that the body is bolted to. So. You can see this has a big stout frame that everything is bolted to. Oh. The body's bolted on top. It's not is, a unibody. Yeah, this is more substantial. Yes. Oh. But even the convertible on that, since they took the roof off on the on the silver cloud convertibles, they first of all, all the body mounts on these are like rubber bonded they call a metal elastic mount. On the convertible, they're just bolt it's bolted straight with steel washers. There's no flexing allowed in that. And what he was talking about, let me get this down and I'll explain it. On the convertible, when they did those, they were called uh, adaptions. Watch yourself, Perry. Watch out, guys. I'm coming down. Coming down. <laughs> this is a car that's been sitting for years. It came out of Beverly Hills. So I get to get it running again and all that stuff. Do you know the provenance? No. I do not know the provenance. Mm -hmm. I think that's personal, so unless they just offer it up to me, yeah. then I, I don't know. So. Yeah. <laughs> so on the, when the, on the Silver Cloud Series, when they did that adaption, which I did do one here in the shop. I took an S3 Bentley that the, the owner bought a kit that I think that was licensed by uh, Molnar Park Ward back in the day for an, somebody to reproduce. So... On the convertible, first of all, it's two doors. Okay, so what they did was they make this front door longer. There was an extension that came with the kit, so you made the front door longer. You took out the rear door, and then there was a piece that welded in here. And then you cut the top and did all kinds of bracing. Now, on those cars, one of the things that they did is there's a structure on the convertible that comes down like this. Okay, so there's an actual steel structure there that helps keep the body from kind of doing this. If you have a convertible, so you know going over railroad tracks that yeah. the windshield seems to go back and forth. Yeah. Right, and, and what's happening is the body's flexing. So not only did they do this in here on that, that the cloud adaption, but they added braces up in the engine compartment. So they added just some steel braces in the corners here to help with that flexing. Cowl shape, that's it. That's the perfect term. Okay. Yes. So this is your cowl uh -huh. section. So it's shaking as you go over the bumps. And that's that's inherent in most convertibles. This one's but pretty it would be soft. more evident in this one as a kit than the factory one, right? No, it's less evident in this car because it has a real frame. Okay. It's more evident in the Corniche because it's a unibody. <laughs> and all those parts came with the kit? Uh-huh. Yeah, that kit was a nightmare. It took three years to get it done. Uh, <laughs> I almost lost the customer. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a lot of bits. And it came with this pamphlet for assembly that was like 10 pages. And I'm thinking you could have done 1,000 pages and it would have been a lot easier to do. Uh, the convertible top mechanism was a joke because it was just these a few hinges and some bars that you had to weld into place and you had to fit it. Uh, the window frames you had to build. It was it was a it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And it was and I do have lots of pictures of that with the top cut off and went. You know, of course, it, the whole body was stripped, so there was no glass, no interior. Uh, I think the engine was still in it. Hi, Willie. And there were cross braces welded into everything before they cut it, because once you cut this big solid steel thing holding everything in place, things are going to move, they're going to relax. What's the plan for this one, Ronnie? Get it running, make it roadworthy for her. Get rid of all that little gas. Wow, well, that's the first thing I did was drain, you can smell it, right? Yeah, you can smell it. I've got, I got, had two cars, that blue Bentley and this one, both had rancid gas in them and I had to drain it. It turns everything to like glue. And the fuel pump didn't work on this, so I've got parts coming for that. How long is that? Well, that's it's good.
good six, eight years, I would say. It gets real nasty, so I put additives, I'll put additives in them, but... Do you have to change the documentation on the car, like with the DMV, to go from one of these kind of cars to a convertible? No. There's, there's no certification? No the only it. thing that would change would be the description of the car, the body style. But the VIN number's the same, all that kind of stuff, so no, you don't have to change anything. And that car was, was shown locally for a while. I, it's, it's still out there. And th that was a nice story because the gentleman, he worked for a big company. He was a British guy. He had that S3 Bentley. He drove it daily for years. And then he, as a retirement present to himself, he wanted to have it done. And he came to me, and I was scared. And he says, can you do this for me? I got the kit coming. I'm going, oh, my God. <laughs> and the nice thing was, he didn't say how much. Because how the hell am I going to know, right? I don't know. And uh, how long? He didn't say that. He didn't ask that either. So we, we took the project, and, and like I said, it was, it was a long, difficult project. He was really happy with the results. We ran into issues with the top. Uh, it was a, it's a silver car or shell gray, I think. And then we did the interior in dark red, and then it had a black canvas top. Really striking. But the top, when the, the trim shop who did it, which I thank them for doing it, they first did it, they did it like a Mercedes. You know, they, they have padded tops. The Corniches, all the Rolls Royce have padded tops. But they put too much in. So when you try to put the top down, it was like an old Mercedes where the top sits up about this oh, high when yeah, it's all yeah, the way yeah. down. <laughs> Can't see out it. So still didn't come out perfect, but we got it so it was usable. So, but so he wanted a canvas top instead. Yeah. It looks pretty rich. I don't either, but I'm going to go with it on this one because the canvas tan tops don't look as good as the Everflex. Well, with a canvas top, my sister had a Volkswagen Beetle that she was going to have the topper done and the, the German vinyl and do the canvas. Like after you folded it down for about a year, you could see all the marks where it folded and wrinkled and it just looked, it got worse and worse and worse as time went on. Well, it's perishable. I don't. Just like flex, your seats are. The Everflex will last a lot longer. Right? It'll get wrinkles. Okay. It'll be tough, but it'll get wrinkles. The, the, the eyes and glass in the back will get folded and, and discolor. And I look in the mirror and I go, what the f happened to me? Right? I used to be this young guy, and, and now. So just, just accept it. On that Everflex, Patina. Patina. <laughs> that window that folds, should you brush it off, the dust off of it before you fold it? Or if by folding it's in the scratch. If you want to keep it perfect, don't put the top down. If you want a convertible, put your top down, enjoy it, and when it gets old, replace it. Okay. That's my opinion, by the way. Five, 65. And the 65, this is easy to cheat with these headlight doors. You can see that they're kind of molded. The 63 and 4, they were flat in here. They don't have this raised part. This, this part right in here is flat on the 63 and 4. So you don't see this raised embossed thing here. It'll still have the badge, but it's flat in here. And a lot of people like this later style one, so they'll put them on an earlier car. Just like a lot of people would put a Cornese badge on that car. And the big tell is if you look at the speedometer on a 65, it is upright. So the needle goes this way. Four and three and everything back, it goes this way. Now, one thing is, is if you have a silver spirit or spur and you want to upgrade to those fully covered headlamps, there's a lot on the market that are made for the right-hand drive countries. So they look the same at first view, right? And they'll fit right in there. But all the, you see how the, the headlamps on this seal beams have all those ridges in them and all that? They're to direct the light beam. So the right-hand drive cars, they're made to direct the light yeah, this way. So it's not into oncoming traffic. And then on the left drive markets, they're meant to go a little bit to the right. So that, that European really doesn't work well for an American car. It works fine. You just blind everybody coming up the road. So not really. But. How tough is it to find that? I'd love to put that on my car, but I, I don't want to use one that's all yellow. And they're glass, so they don't go yellow. Okay. 
They're glass. They're not plastic like the modern. Is glass. that something you'd recommend that I do on my car, or just leave it the way it is? If it's going to cause problems later on. Do you want it? Yeah. Then I recommend you do it. All right. Whatever you, your heart desires. That's right. It's, it's your, your car. car. It's yeah. a money pit. It's, it has no resale value. And your wallet. My and Prius is worth more. Money is like water, folks. <laughs> Goes through your fingers, you happy. And, and unless they fill your coffin with it, you can't take it with you. Sometimes the glass looks a little hazy, though. Yeah. But not, no. well, not, only on modern cars. Because to make all these headlamps, like this XK8 here, this oh. has those big one-piece headlamps. Now, those are glass on that one, but most other cars, they're, they're plastic. Why are they going it, to plastic? Because it's cheaper. It's uh, way like cheaper to make. Is it, is it an issue? Huh? Then a, a car like a Rolls Royce, is it really an issue? A Phantom is covered with plastic. A Bentley Continental GT is covered with plastic. It's manufacturing. So it's cheap. It's, it's, it's cheaper. 